And boss, if you created your virtual warehouse with the medium size, so in this case, in this case, we are going to we are going to allocate you four credits per hour and then four into so based on the addition and then the two point seven dollar like that they are going to charge you. So this is very much important. You have to understand what is the different size of warehouse sizes and what are the credits, how they are going to start pricing on you. So this is about the pricing. This is about the uh, pricing. If you have any doubts in the understanding on the pricing, just let me know. We will discuss and then we will proceed further. If you, if you are clear, just confirm me. Then we will discuss next top topics. And also, yes, and also, always I am trying to tell you, please, please, please make a note somewhere uh, as a running note. <coughs> sure. Yes, sir. Guys, clear or not clear? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Then we'll go. We'll go uh, to discuss that different editions are available in the different editions are available in the Snowflake. Different editions. We have a four editions actually: standard, enterprise, business critical, virtual. Bit. So I'm repeating. I'm repeating once again. So you need to make a note also. So we have a standard edition, we have a enterprise edition, we have a business critical edition, we have a virtual private edition. So these are the four types of editions we have in Snowflake. In general, or in in uh, projects, we are using this business critical. We are using this business critical uh, edition for our. Uh, Business purpose. We are using this business critical for our business purpose in our companies. In our companies, then we'll see what are the options are available. What are the different uh, benefits or great features are available in the each editions. The standard is the standard is very basic edition, very basic edition, very basic edition. Here, uh, whatever the data is, you are going to store. That is in a encryption format. That is in a encryption format. Time travel is up to one day. Now, the time travel is one of the great feature in Snowflake. What is the meaning of the time travel? Time travel means suppose already I have explained in very first class, but let me repeat that one. Time travel nothing but if the data is modified from the table. So after after modification of the data from the table. So you came to know that you come to know that you came to know that. So this is not an a. So whatever you have done the modification, then that is not an in uh, uh, like uh, that is not a good modification. You need to restore the original data into your table. So in such scenario, in Snowflake has provided you option the time travel option. Nothing but you can go back to the you can go back to the history of the table. And then you can bring the original data and restore the original data to table. So in the standard edition, in the standard edition, this history will be available for only one day. So if, suppose if you if you cross no if you if you done the modification to the table today six o'clock till tomorrow six o'clock you can able to go to the history of the table and then bring the original data and then restore the data. It will it will available for only one day. If you cross that one day, then it is not possible. And then what about the disaster recovery? Disaster recovery nothing but suppose if databases go offline, if databases go offline, then you can able to you can able to bring that into online. What about this data share? Data share nothing but yeah. Secure data share, so you can able to you can able to share the data between the <coughs> Snowflake accounts. This is about your standard edition. Coming to the enterprise edition, 
whatever the features are available in the standard that will be available that is very basic second one is multi cluster warehouse yesterday we have discussed single warehouse and then multi cluster warehouse in standard edition only you can work with a single warehouse this enterprise edition will be supporting the multi cluster warehouse also this time travel in enterprise edition will be there for 90 days in case of standard time travel will be in only one day in in case of enterprise in case of enterprise time travel option will be around till 90 days so this is a great feature actually this is a great feature actually so suppose 90 days means if you have done your modifications today till 90 days if you want to bring the data then it will be available for it will be available for the 90 days so within the time any time you can able to go back to the history of the table and then bring the data bring the data and then next what is this materialized views materialized views one of the concept in snowflake which is used to improve the your uh, sql improve the performance of your sql query suppose your select statement is taking around 5 seconds to return the data on top of that if you create a if you create a materialized view then you can able to bring the data in within one second the beauty of this materialized view is it will improve the performance of your sql query it will improve the performance of your sql query where your sql query is taking one minute but your materialized view will materialized view will we will give the result within a fraction of seconds so that is the great feature of great benefit of your materialized view search optimization column level security these things and are provided in enterprise option in business critical so whatever the features are available in the enterprise edition by default that will be there additionally all the objects all the things are encrypted everywhere all the options what whatever whatever you are going to create your objects those are encrypted everywhere in the internally we can't see those encryption encryption number but internally it is happening internally it is happening so that is a great feature what already enterprise edition has the so many features those features are available with the business critical plus plus this uh, data encryption everywhere and then failover and then disaster recovery so failover and then disaster recovery nothing but if your database is crash if database is crash and then you can able to you can able to bring that that bring that database into online bring that database into online so this is the great feature in the business critical edition what about the virtual private all business critical features are available in the virtual private and then the extra is you need to create a separate environment separate uh, uh, servers for different different environment suppose if you are maintaining if you are maintaining qa server if you are maintaining testing server if you are maintaining dev server if you are maintaining production server so for that you need to create a separate separate servers in your virtual private so this is about the this is about your snowflake editions guys any doubts in this these are some theoretical parts you will get the interview questions what are the different types of editions are available in Snowflake and explain them. And also you will get the what is warehouse, what is multi clustering warehouse and what is the Snowflake architecture, how many layers are there, uh, what are the functionality of those architecture, can you explain all those things. These are the theoretical concept. So you have to, for sure, you have to remember, understand and explain thoroughly. Whatever we are discussing in the sessions, if you, if you understand that and explain clearly whatever we have discussed here that is 100% 1000% more than enough place that's why i am asking you i will share you the note i will share you the note along with me you also prepare your uh, some points some points in your notes so that you will check the material and then you will check the note so you will become a comfortable if you get if you get any doubts again you will come back to me and we will discuss on the same topic so that you will become a comfortable so that you will become a comfortable
so this is about the additions guy any doubts let me know any doubts let me know just open, open your mouth guys uh no sir but uh, i wanted to know in a typical real time environment or a real time project um uh, typically a dev or qa or a production environment what are the additions might be there i mean will be there whether the dev will be having only standard addition or whether the qa having enterprise addition only or the production might usually usually in our real scenarios in our organization we all are using business critical for all the uh, uh, for all the requirements okay next question <clears throat> if you don't have any questions then we'll move into another topic to discuss <coughs> Understood. Fine. Yeah. Then we'll go. How to connect to Snowflake? Web user interface. Second one is no SQL through the DOS command. Through the DOS command, so we can able to we can able to connect your Snowflake. You can able to connect your Snowflake using your web user interface or using Snowflake or no use no no SQL using DOS command. And also apart from this, we have some other options also, but. Majorly, we are using these two options only. Some other options also available: JDBC drivers, ODBC drivers. Those things are done. But in real-time scenarios, as per my experience, we have used only these two options. Only these two options. Then, as part of our regular classes, daily we are using these web user interfaces. It's no SQL and then DAS command things. Uh, we will be having the one session. How do we use this NoSQL? Then now, then now we'll see how to create the how to create the uh, Snowflake account. How to create the Snowflake account? Fine. We need to we need to follow the steps and create yourself. Create yourself. Create yourself, and then we'll explore what are the options are available in the your Snowflake account. Then go to go to Google. So here, make a note somewhere. Snowflake.com. Snowflake.com. Guys, have you make a note? Snowflake.com. Yes. I need confirmation from all because you need to create account from your end. This is this is the free account. This is a free account. It will be available for the one month. You can practice in the tenure environment. You can practice in the tenure environment. You need to create. You can create, which is very easy step. You can create from your end also. Just you need to follow what I am doing, right? Just this is snowflake.com. Enter the snowflake.com, then you will get into this home page. Click on the start for free. Click on the start for free. So here, provide your all the details. First name, I will give the Durga Soft. Durga Soft. 
uh, email ID will give my email ID. It will go into that. Uh, I will give the company name as Durga Soft. Role you need to select consultant. Location you need to select as a India. Guys, are you following or not? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. So you need to give your personal details here. So once you have given everything, just continue. Click on the continue. See here. You need to select edition standard or enterprise or business critical. I am selecting a business critical. For you need to make a note down. You need to select. You need to select a business critical option. You need to select a business critical option. This is the option to select the edition. Once you select the business business critical, this is the option to provide the select the cloud provider. You need to select the AWS. Guys, you are following or not? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Super. So you need to select the you need to select the AWS. See here. It is it is asking continental information. So as we have selected in India, just select this ACS specific Singapore. Then click on the get get started. Click on the get started. Click on the get started. Now, now it will ask this many options. You can skip this one. You can skip this one. You can skip this one. See now, you are now signed up. An email to an email to activate your account has been sent to your email ID. I will log in into my email ID. Here you will get a one link to activate the account. Snowflake dot com. Activate your Snowflake account. Click on this. Click to activate. Click to activate. Then it will navigate to this page. Now give the username and then password. So this is the key here. You need to make a note this username and then password. I will give the Durga Soft user level. One second. Confirm password and then get started. So this is your home page of home page of this is your home page of your Snowflake account. You need to make a note down like this. This is the your account URL. This is username. 
this is password for your account you need to save somewhere so that you can able to so that you can able to log in directly and then work so this is the uh, your when you create a account then you will get you will get this pays at very first at very first so have you make a note down all the steps guys yes yes sir <coughs> See when you get here this option, first option is worksheet. First option is worksheet. If you click on this worksheet, see here, you will have a plus worksheet. If you click on this, so from this option, from here you can able to, from here you can able to query your SQL queries in this area. So this is one of the option. So worksheets where you are going to worksheets where you are going to write your SQL queries. Next data. So here, here you can able here you can able to create the database. Fine. Yes. So here. If you want to create a any new database, you can able to create new database. If you want to create any schema, then you can able to create the new schemas from here. Like that. See, first one is worksheets is important, data is important, and then this. In admin, here we have warehouse option. Here you need to create your warehouse. So these are the three options you have to understand. So once go into your worksheet, go into your worksheet, then click on this latest one. So here you can able to create your own database. Create database sample database. So here you can able to see your sample database like that. So for now, just whatever we have followed the steps, you create from your end and then start exploring on the things. Whatever you can able to explore, you can explore and uh, whatever you need to understand, you can understand. So from tomorrow onwards, we will start using the coding and then the actual snowflake uh, practical sessions. But before that, you need to create an account and be ready with, align with me, so that whatever we are going to discuss in the session, uh, as a theoretical part and then coding part, I am going to share with you. I am going to share with you. Then you can you can able to practice from your end also. Okay. Guys, let me know if you have okay. any trouble in understanding how to create the Snowflake account or something else. Why I am stopping till here means. At any cost, 100% you need to create account today. By coming to tomorrow session, you have to be ready with the, your account. So only after completion of the tomorrow session, I am going to share with you all the code, all the things. So that right immediately you can able to do the practice. Next. If you are not creating, if you are unable to create the account, if you are not able to create the account, you are not ready then you are lacking and then you are not able to do the practice and then, then it is problem for you. So that what I am suggesting you, whatever the queries, whatever the difficulties you face, you need to at any cost create the account and be ready with the for tomorrow's class. That's why I am stopping the session here. Fine, guys. Okay, sir. Any difficulties okay, here? Sir. No, sir. No, no, no right. Sir. All good. Yes, all good. Tomorrow we will meet at same six same guys. Okay, sir. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll close the session for today. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, just as before before going to proceed, just let me know if uh, you have uh, any any uh, doubts. Jayant, Manohar, Nitesh, uh, Raju, uh, you 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 all guys are in yesterday's uh, part of yesterday's, yesterday's class, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Just uh, yes. Any any doubts in understanding of the definition of uh, uh, definition of uh, uh, snowflake? Mm, no. So we have discussed basic uh, level of information yesterday. Yes. Uh, any doubts? No. Okay, super, super. One second. So we will discuss today uh, architect architecture of the snowflake. Architecture of the snowflake. One second. Uh, guys, uh, actually, uh, we have a three layers, three layers in uh, snowflake architecture. Uh, we have three layers in uh, uh, snowflake architecture. One is uh, cloud service layer. Another one is query processing layer. Third one is uh, database storage layer. Let me repeat once again. One is cloud. Uh, guys, just uh, I am suggesting you and recommending you. Af after the each and every session, whatever uh, we are going to discuss. The theoretical part and then code part. Uh, I will share you uh, end of the session to all of you uh, to your uh, uh, personal mail IDs. At the same time, uh, just uh, uh, please prepare uh, some running notes from your end also, so that it will be um, easy to uh, like uh, uh, rewind the things. Just make uh, some notes from your end also. Fine. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we have a, a cloud services layer, and then query processing layer, and then database layer. I am repeating once again. So why I am repeating once again and once again? This Snowflake architecture is very much important. Damn sure, damn sure you will get a one or two questions, one or two questions from the Snowflake architecture in the every interview, wherever you go. In all the companies, in all the companies, that's why I am repeating. So we have a cloud services layer, we have a query processing layer, we have a database storage layer. Now we will discuss one by one. So what is this database storage layer will do? What is this database storage will do? Storage component is uh, this is a one of the component, one of the database. Storage component. This is one of the component of the Snowflake. Nothing but so we have a like storage and then compute component like that. This is a storage component of the storage component of the Snowflake. And so whenever whenever you load the data, whenever you load the data into a Snowflake, whenever you load the data into a Snowflake, automatically the data will be stored. Data will be Stored in a continuous micro partitions, continuous micro partitions. 
please what is the meaning of this micro partitions means see if you load if you have a some 2 tb of 2 tb of csv file 2 tb of csv file in your source system in your source system when you load that 2 tb of csv file data into your snowflake data warehouse automatically that data will be stored in the tables automatically the data will be stored in the tables and then from the tables from the day from the tables in a database storage layer in in storage component so we have a micro partitions we have a micro partitions where your business data where your business data is going to reside into the component so the least component of the storage layer in the snowflake is micro partitions when you when you store your data uh, in your snowflake automatically the data will be stored into a continuous micro partitions each micro partitions will be having the size 50 to 500 mb 50 to 500 mb fine so apart from this micro partitions the data will be stored data will be stored in the columnar format data will be stored in the columnar format data will be so what do you know what is the meaning of this uh, uh, columnar format guys yes. means uh, column format yeah column format is column format is see uh, first 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 let me let me explain you uh, what is the meaning of uh, the micro partition how it it looks like see see this is a micro partition structure this is a micro partition structure i will tell you what is the advantage to have the data in a micro partitions and also what is the advantage to store the data in a column format see if you speak about the traditional database or a data warehouse if you speak about the traditional database or a traditional data warehouse data will be stored in a row format data will be stored in a row format data will be stored in a row format in our traditional data warehouse or a traditional database database for example traditional data warehouse if you consider a sql server if you consider sql server where in a rd sql server rd vms or it's a sql server data warehouse the data will be stored in the tables in in form of columns and rows in form of columns and rows and then so the data will be stored in the form of the rows in a traditional database or a traditional data warehouse in case of a snowflake in case of a snowflake the data will be stored the data will be um, stored in a columnar format stored in a columnar format i will tell you that one see here here itself the data i will i will tell you see this is a one of the example this is so this is the one of the example of the table so we have a column called type name country date type name country date the data is stored in a so this is the traditional structure of the table traditional structure of the table so data is stored in form of a column and data is stored in form of a column and then rows see we have a type column name column and then country column and then date column when the data is loaded into the snowflake the data will be stored in a continuous micro partitions this is a one micro partition this is another micro partition this is another micro partition this is another micro partition within this micro partitions within this micro partitions your table data is going to loaded into multiple micro partitions partitions if you see here the column type name and then country date so this is our traditional structure in case of your snowflake see the data is storing in a micro partitions in column format see here the type is here type is one column and the name is uh, another column country is another column date is another column see here type name country and then date this is a row format so this is a column format this is a column format so your first record type type first Second column type is two. See here, type is first column. Type is two. Second column, second column name is A. Name is A. And then country, first column is UK. And then date, first column is 11 by 12. So what is the advantage of this having the? What is the advantage of this having the column format? Means if you want to search a data, 
instead of searching a whole rows in a whole columns just it will traverse only in single direction instead of checking the all the data all the data from your all micro partitions from your all micro partitions so that you can able to retrieve the so you can able to retrieve the data in a very fast in a very faster as i mentioned earlier the data will be stored in a uh, micro partitions and compressed way and then optimal 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 way so this is a, this is what you can able to you can able to pull the you can able to pull the data very fast from the snowflake see here see here suppose uh if if you want to search if you want to search uh, like uh, type equal to r name equal to y name equal to y name equal to y see y is available in micro partition micro partition 3 and then micro partition 3 so if you write a query select star from select star from table where name equal to where name equal to y where name equal to y so the y the value from the name column is available in the micro partitions micro partition 3 and then 4 so what it will do if you hit a query into the snowflake data warehouse instead of searching the all the micro partitions it will go into the particular micro partition in a column format it will go into the particular micro partitions and then it will retrieve the data from the sql from the snowflake data warehouse for you so what is the benefit here suppose consider for your one table for your one table if you have a n number of micro partitions the data is to table related data is stored in n number of micro partitions if you are searching for the particular set of the result set instead of searching the n number of micro partitions directly it will go into the directly it will go into the particular micro partitions and then it will retrieve the data it will retrieve the data so that what is the benefit here instead of searching the all the micro partitions it will go into the particular micro partitions and then it will retrieve the data so that you can consume the execution of the time of your sql code then how how this snowflake will know how this how this snowflake will know if you write a select star from table where name equal to y then it will go into the only particular micro partitions how the snowflake will come to know that the y is available in the micro partition 3 and 4 so we have a some metadata table some suppose when you store a data into a table automatically the data will be stored into the micro partitions micro partitions that micro partitions will be having the uh, for each and every micro partitions will be having the the serial numbers for the micro partitions the serial number and the micro partition details will be written into the some metadata tables there it will mention that this micro partition is having the data from this range this range and then from the this table so using that metadata tables when you query for, for when you query for from for your table then it will check the metadata tables and then so based on that it will identify the which micro partition has the data for the, your query and then directly it will go into the particular micro partition and then it will bring the data for you so that instead of instead of searching all the micro partitions instead of searching the n number of micro partitions directly it will go into the particular micro partition nothing but micro partition number 3 and then micro partition number 4 so it will it will save the to search the remaining two micro partitions it will go into the directly 3 and 4 micro partition and it will bring the data for you and one more thing is so as you have a data in column, column format in snowflake instead of searching in your row, see in your suppose if you write if you write select star from table where name equal to y it will come into the, it will come into the name column and it will traverse it will traverse all the records and it will identify the y and then it will bring the entire record for you guys so this is and all it will take the long process to search the data and then return the data so to overcome all these things in snowflake they have they have they have architect they have designed the architecture in a very simplified manner so whatever you want suppose if you want to y if you want to y only it will come and then it will search into the only this way and then it will bring the data for you guys so this is about the database storage layer in the database storage layer in the architecture of snowflake so whenever you will once again i am repeating 
just make a note down somewhere guys what is the meaning of micro partitions what is the meaning of column format so what is the meaning of this database storage layer how the data is going to store so everything you need to know and then whatever we are discussing here just if you explain all these things this is more than enough guys see database layer is the this is a one of the component in the snowflake where you are going to store your business data into your snowflake whenever you load the data whenever you load the data from the uh, multiple files uh, from the different different sources obviously the data is going to store in a snowflake in a tables and in a micro partitions multiple micro partitions format whenever the data is loaded into the micro partitions the micro partitions address and the details will be available in the metadata tables in the snowflake so by using that metadata tables if you query if you query on a particular table by using the address of the metadata by using the address of the micro partitions which are available in the metadata tables directly it will go into the particular micro partition and then it will bring the data for you so instead of searching the n number of micro partitions it will go into the it will go into the particular number of micro partitions and it will bring the data so that so this can be called as a optimal way so instead of traversing all the things so directly you are going to the particular things and bring the data so that you can able to see the robust performance comparing to other data warehouse so this is about a storage layer discussion guys any doubts here this is the storage layer any doubts here yes so i did a, uh, yes uh, that metadata tables contain the all the information about the micro partition right Uh, yes address of the micro partition and then so it will it will it it will, it will be having that uh, uh, address of the micro partition is correct okay okay yes guys in here one more doubt yes oh. sorry in the traditional database oracle like we have row ids and some other things right okay oh so based on that also we will get the query in the quickly right so what is the difference between that row id and here that uh, address of the metadata table uh, row id means i didn't get you uh, may know your name please sir it may so now if i'll store the data in one row in the oracle table it will save with one address uh, one address of the not see, primary key see, hmm. see i i i understand your question see here actually uh, see row id when you create a index not only oracle whatever the rdbms traditional rdbms when you store the data in your traditional rdbms on top of that on top of that if you create a indexes on the table then only this row id row id concept will come into picture guy actually see if you don't create any indexes on the table then it will it, it this table can be called as a hash table or a heap table see until you create a indexes on the particular table you will not be able to see the address of the any data in your rdbms tables if you create a indexes on that if you create a indexes on the particular table so it will create a balanced tree in the database based on that that is different concept again we, we need to go to that concept we need to discuss half an hour on that but yes for your for your for your question if you create a index on that for that particular data for that particular data pages in your database so there in rdbms whatever we have a micro partitions in the snowflake there in rdbms data pages where the data is going to store until you create a, until you create a indexes your data will not be having the row id fine Sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, may may know your name? Your name, please. Raju. Raju. See, the, I understand. I understand your question. Until we create a indexes on a table in RDBMS, row ID concept will not come. Row ID or key ID. Yes. Once you create a indexes on your column or a table, then your row ID will come, and then again that balance tree concept will start. So that is different again. so here okay. by default by default by default when you store your data by default he will maintain uh, address in a metadata instead of instead of instead of uh, searching all the 
the number of micro partitions will go into a particular micro partition. Have you got the differences now? Yes, sir, I got it. Clear or not? Still, you still, if you have any confusion, clear, sir. Let me know. Clear, sir. Oh, huh? oh no. Clear, sir. Super. 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 Now next. So, so we are done with the database storage layer discussion. We are done with the database storage layer discussion, and then we'll go to the query processing layer. Query processing layer. So, how does database storage layer is important in your Snowflake? This query processing layer is also very much important. In single word, I can say this query processing layer is virtual compute warehouse. Virtual guys, I, I can recommend you to make a, some running note also. I will share this content after this end of the session. After this end of the session, uh, uh, make a, some running note also. So this query processing query processing layer is a hardware component which can be called as a virtual compute warehouse. Virtual compute warehouse. Virtual compute warehouse. Fine. So how your database storage is a storage component. This is virtual warehouse or query processing layer is also compute uh, component. Compute component is a hardware component. The combination of RAM, CPU, motherboard, everything. So this is very much important. This is this query processing layer or a virtual warehouse computer, virtual warehouse, uh, virtual warehouse component, virtual warehouse component is uh, very much important because how you are going to store your data into your storage component. This compute virtual compute warehouse, what it will do, whatever the operations you do, whatever the operations you do, you know, Snowflake data warehouse, whatever the operation, if you are loading your data, if you are submitting your workloads into, if you are submitting your workloads into your uh, Snowflake, what is the meaning of workloads? Workloads nothing but a number of SQL queries. Uh, if the number of users are connecting to your Snowflake and then they are retrieving your data, uh, right. Uh, if you are processing a large volume of data, if concurrent users are accessing your, if concurrent uh, users are accessing your Snowflake data, whatever the operations you do, your virtual compute warehouse components are very much required, which are a, which are a uh, uh, hardware component in your Snowflake, which are a hardware component in your Snowflake. So whatever you do, data load or the data processing, data retrieval, Data return, your hardware resources are required to process your request, to process your uh, uh, request, to process your uh, request. See here, virtual virtual resources or hardware resources can create the multiple, uh, right? See here, till, till, till here you are clear, huh? I will, I will tell you. See, this query processing, query processing, uh, uh, layer is a virtual warehouse, virtual warehouse, which is a compute layer, and then this is a hardware resources. This is a hardware resource to your Snowflake. It will be useful and it, it will be uh, required uh, to process all the requests for your all all your requests in your Snowflake. The requests are either you may be submitting your workloads or your queries, or you are accessing the data from the uh, retrieving the data from the Snowflake, or Loading the data into your Snowflake to to process all these requests, your virtual compute resources are required, which are a hardware resources. Till here, this is the basic concept of this query processing layer. This is clear or not? So, if you clear on this, next I will go into the next points in the query processing layer. Mm. Okay, miss. Uh, in the query processing layer, virtual warehouses is the uh, hardware component. Uh, hardware component. See, in your traditional database or a data warehouse, you will be having the CPUs, memories, and then uh, everything, right? right? Like that. Like that. This is also a virtual warehouse. Virtual warehouse is the hardware resources in your Snowflake. So just you can't able to see those physical devices, those things and all. This is architecture. I will show you how to create the virtual warehouses, how it looks like. So you need to create virtual warehouse. This is also one of the object like how you are creating a table. So this virtual warehouse is also one of the object in your snowflake. You are going to create, you are going to uh, create a virtual warehouses. Fine, guys. Yes. yes. So now 
so you can you you dedicatedly dedicatedly you can able to dedicatedly you can able to dedicatedly you can able to create a separate virtual warehouses for the each project or each team please make a note down dedicatedly you can able to create a virtual compute warehouse virtual compute warehouse or virtual warehouses for each project and each team separately so whenever you are going to work with the snowflake as a particular team or a particular project you can able to access only your project related virtual compute warehouse so that there is no dependency between the each and every virtual compute warehouse you can able to do your you can able to do your tasks very easily and then you can able to execute the things very fastly so that you can able to see the result very faster okay fine and also see i told you can create each virtual warehouse for each process to improve the performance and make the independent these are the independent components so we have a two types of we have a two types of virtual warehouses single warehouse and then multi cluster warehouse single warehouse can create with the different sizes multi cluster warehouses can create with minimum and maximum clusters with minimum and maximum clusters so with minimum and uh, maximum clusters yesterday i told you so yesterday i told you actually a single warehouses will be created with the different sizes and then a multi a multi cluster warehouse can be created with the minimum and maximum number of minimum and maximum number of customer uh, 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 clusters we will be having the separate discussion on the uh, virtual warehouse virtual compute warehouse so where where i am going to show you what are the different sizes are there how the uh, prices pricing will be happening and what are the Uh, what is a multi cluster warehouse and then what are the options we have how do we create everything i am going to show you uh, we have a one separate session on the uh, virtual compute warehouse we will see more details on because this is very much important and then you will get the uh, multiple questions on this virtual compute warehouse also i will uh, i am going to i am going to uh, take one separate session on the uh, virtual compute warehouse we will see uh, the in detail uh, details of the component so for now so you can able to see uh, we can able to tell that this query processing layer is a virtual compute warehouse and then virtual compute warehouse which is a uh, which is a hardware resources to your snowflake guys any doubt, any doubt in your uh, uh, virtual uh, this this query processing layer hello no uh, no sir clear right mm -hmm. i will i will share you this content i will share you this note also once once uh, complete of this discussion so next next layer is a cloud services layer so we are done with the database storage and then query processing layer discussion right agree yes so, yes yeah so so we have a cloud services layer what is this cloud services layer see here so this is a top layer this is a very much a top layer and then it will handle it will handle the entire snowflake guys this is the very first layer in your uh, snowflake architecture this is the key component in your key component in your snowflake architecture it will take care of everything of your snowflake till when you create a account in your snowflake when you create a account when you create your uh, when you create a your snowflake account so your username your password and your account details will be taken care by will be taken care by your uh, cloud service layer so all the access control related all the access control related information will be checked managed by your cloud service layer when you log in into when you log in into snowflake when you log in into your snowflake account initially your cloud service layer will be cross verified with your details then only it will allow you to log in into your then only uh, uh, then only allow you to log in into your snowflake your snowflake so without this layer without this layer your snowflake will not work so this is a top layer this is very much important layer it will take care of your access control related uh, uh, things and also whatever you store the data whatever you store the data into snowflake whatever the data is your processing whatever the your workloads are executing or your queries are executing your cloud service your cloud service layer will be managed 
your storage component and also your virtual compute warehouse also everything 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 will be managed by your uh, cloud service layer see if you execute a one query in your snowflake till once you hit the query in your snowflake data warehouse till you get the result into the end users entire thing will be taken care by what it will do it will it will it will it will, it will receive the request from the user suppose Razu is executing a one SQL SQL query in Snowflake. When the Razu started to execute the SQL query in uh, uh, Snowflake, what it will, what this cloud service will uh, cloud cloud service layer will do? It will parse. It will parse. It will parse your query. What is the meaning of parse? What is the meaning of parse? Parse nothing but it will check the syntactical uh, thing. And then, if everything goes well, then it will send the this request will go into the next level. So when you hit the query into your uh, Snowflake initial layer, cloud service layer will accept your request. It will pass the query, and then it will pass into the next virtual compute warehouse, virtual compute warehouse la la uh, layer. There you will be having the cache. Cache nothing but this is one of the memory. Already, if the cache is available, in, if already. Cache has a data for you for your query in the virtual compute layer. Then it will return the data for the the cache itself. The cache is don't have in the virtual compute warehouse layer. Then it will, the request will go into the your storage layer where the data is going to store in the uh, Snowflake. So from there the data will be returned into the your cloud service layer. So so what I mean to say, cloud service layer will accept the request and then it will. It will push into the next level, and then it will bring the data, and then it will submit it to the end users. So this is the one of the things, and also remaining things it will take care of the infrastructure manager, and then metadata manager. I told you metadata, those things and all, whatever the metadata tables will be having, those things and all it will taking care by your cloud service layer, your cloud service layer. So this is about the cloud service layer, guys. Uh, guys, then now we have discussed database storage, and then query processing, and then database. Database, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, cloud service layer. Guys, any doubts? Any doubts in this uh, 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 discussion? Architecture. Hello. Good sir. Good. Good right. Yes, good. Yeah. You you can you, you can contact to you can contact the institute. Uh, they will share you the material. They will they will share you whatever uh, uh, whatever what, whatever we are discussing here. This material everything the institute people will uh, share you guys. Just contact to the institute guys and then uh, uh, ask for the material and then they will share you this material guys. Is that fine? So tomorrow tomorrow we will be. Uh, tomorrow we will discuss on the in detail of the virtual compute warehouse and also how the prices pricing is the doing and then what are the different editions are available in the snowflake tomorrow we will continue with that class guys is that fine thank you sir sir can you uh, miss, uh, practically uh, miss a small uh, uh, query and how to Sorry? store it <laughs> Uh, Miss, uh, <clears throat> can you uh, give uh, one example how to uh, Miss uh, store the data in the column and what mechanism uh, Miss uh, they use Miss like metadata Miss how data is uh, Miss address is stored in the uh, that uh, uh, metadata meta, 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 meta tables I will I will give you but actually when you store your data in the Snowflake. How the data is going to store in the snowflake that we can't see actually. We can't see that one actually. The internally it is happening. Okay. But, okay, we, okay. but we can able to see the metadata, how the data is stored and what is the address, we can able to see the metadata. As part of the course, we, I will I will I will give you that metadata tables. Okay. Sure. Fine. Any other questions? <laughs> Any other questions, please? Uh, 
Sir, we are loading to files in same like SSIS packages like we are, we are using. See, in SSIS package, what you will do? So you will have it. You will, you will, you will uh, having the some CSV files in your some shared locations or in some yes. different sources. From that uh, CSV files, initially you will load the data into your staging tables, right? So from yes. there and then on top of that staging staging uh, tables, you will apply the lot of transformations or you will apply you will write a uh, number of stored processes on top of your staging tables and then required data you will. Load the data into your target tables which are available in the production servers, right? That is the thing happening in your SS package, correct? Yes, sir. In Snowflake, what you will do, the advantage of the Snowflake is instead of loading a data into your staging tables, directly you will load the files into Snowflake. So from there, you can able to do a ETL. Mm. Hello. Uh, that is the uh, uh, that is the advantage. Directly we load the files into Snowflake. Okay. So once you load the oh. files into Snowflake, so from there you can able to do the ETL or ELT, whatever you want. So that is the advantage oh. and beauty of your Snowflake. So in in case of your on-prem, in case of your on-prem SQL Server SSIS, you can't able to load the files. You can load the data from the files, but you can't able to load the files into your uh, SQL Server, right? Yes. You got the difference? Yes. Yeah, there, yeah that's a, that's a, there's a very much beautiful concepts and beautiful advantages are there in the Snowflake case, actually. Clear? Clear, thank you. Shall we continue tomorrow? Yeah, if sure. you have any questions, you can ask me, or else we'll, uh, we'll continue tomorrow. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, guys. We will meet tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, bye. Fine. See, a uh, single warehouse, the thing, but yeah, it will be having the different sizes, right? It will be having the different sizes so based on the usage and requirement requirement we can choose the size and create the warehouse create the warehouse i will show you so what is uh, what is all the options and second one is multi cluster warehouse multi cluster warehouse is we have a see here one second multi cluster warehouse we have a mode and we have a scaling policy mode scaling policy this is standard and economy standard and economy Standard and economic. So here, auto scale and then maximized. Auto scale and maximized. The combination, we can create this multi cluster warehouse like this. <coughs> Combination
don't get confusion i will explain all these things maximized fine so th so this is the best practice now let me explain one by one so i am discussing about the first one auto scale and then standard if you select the auto scale see first of all what is the meaning of this virtual warehouse that you bought this virtual warehouse once again i am repeating you guys so the way the virtual this is the virtual warehouse how you are going to create a virtual warehouse see this is a single virtual warehouse option you need to provide your virtual warehouse name and then you have a different different sizes this is a single virtual warehouse if you come down you have a option multi cluster warehouse if you select this multi cluster warehouse you have these many options i will select i will i will tell you uh, all these options and then what is the purpose of this these options first of all this virtual warehouse is a uh, snowflake component so which is the hardware component to your snowflake yesterday already i have explained this which is a hardware component and which is very much essential which is very much essential for your all the uh, tasks like data processing data loading and uh, uh, data retrieving and then uh, while submitting your queries to 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 perform all these activities to perform all these activities your virtual compute warehouse is very much essential very much essential this is a hardware component purely hardware component purely hardware component so this is the single virtual warehouse single virtual warehouse and then this is multiple single virtual warehouse completely you will create a, you will create a virtual warehouse and then you will select the you will select the different different sizes small x small small medium large x large double x large and the triple x large like that so based on the requirement you will select the you will select the different sizes and create the virtual warehouse in case of a multi cluster warehouse you have two options you have two options you need to make a note down and you have to remember all these things guys you have two options mode and then scaling policy in mode you have two options auto scale and then maximized in scaling policy you have a standard and then economy you have a standard and then economy so what is the meaning of this auto scale what is the meaning of this auto scale and then standard so when you select this option you will be having the minimum clusters minimum cluster minimum cluster maximum clusters you can give maximum clusters you can give minimum cluster is 1 and maximum cluster is 5 and then so this is this is mode this is mode auto scale this is mode auto scale and then standard this is scaling policy so what it will do if you select this combination if you select this combination what it will do suppose suppose if you load if you load the if you try to load the data around 10 tb of 10 tb of data into a snowflake 10 tb of data data load data load 10 tb of data and this is one of the scenario if you are trying to load a 10 tb of data into your snowflake 
so what it will do if you select as a if you create a if you create a your virtual warehouse with the multi cluster warehouse along with the mode as a auto scale and then scaling policy as a standard and if you select a minimum cluster is 1 and then maximum cluster is 5 what it will do internally before loading a process before loading a process before loading a data internally it will calculate so how many clusters are required how many clusters are this required for this process first it will start with the one directly it will not start with the five it will start with the one and then it will start processing the it will start loading the data if the minimum cluster is not sufficient minimum cluster is one is not sufficient and then it will increase the maximum cluster to two and then even two is also not sufficient and it will increase to three and it will increase to four and it will increase to five like that so based on the requirement based on the workload based on the data processing based on the data load the maximum clusters will be increased maximum clusters will be increased maximum clusters will be increased so this is the one case data load suppose <coughs> you are submitting complex sql code you are submitting complex sql code uh, around 10 10 you are submitting 10 complex sql code to execute the sql code and then to retrieve the data from the snowflake so here also what it will do so it will calculate internally so when you submit suppose uh, the the user the user name called xyz he has submitted a uh, he has submitted a around three queries the user name abc he has submitted a four queries another user has submitted a three queries so multi users are submitted multi users are submitted to snowflake to execute their queries totally we have a 10 queries in the totally we have a 10 queries in the queue so based on the workload based on the complexity of the sql code then it will this internally the multi cluster virus will calculate that how many clusters are required for this 10 queries then those many clusters will be increased one by one if <coughs> sorry those clusters are those sql queries are required maximum number of five customers flight uh, uh, five clusters then it will increase the one by one plus two two plus one three plus one four plus one like that so <coughs> so based on the workload and then based on the data processing based on the data load it will calculate it will calculate and then it will calculate and then it will increase the number of clusters number of clusters so you can call it as a clusters or a servers you can call it as a clusters or a servers it will it will provide the hardware resources to your process actual process so overall overall what is the meaning of this mode equal to auto scale and then scaling policy equal to standard means so based on the requirement the maximum number of customers will be added one by one based on the query or then based on the data so this is about the uh, auto scale and then standard this is clear or not, this is clear or not guys if you clear this then you will be understand further points if you don't understand then i will repeat once again tell me confirm it is if you are understand sorry cluster means the space no virtual space where we data stored like no no we... not in a virtual no 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 sorry 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 you, 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 you. see clusters mean <coughs> suppose i will give you example just compare for comparison this is not in a data storage component virtual virus this is a completely your hardware component to your snowflake let's consider so in your system you will be having the ram right ram right yes suppose if your 4gb is if 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 4gb is 4gb ram is not sufficient then what you will do uh, we will increase the ram to 8gb and then yes. the motherboard cpu capacity is not sufficient what you will do uh, we will increase the capacity of the cpu like that like that only so the multi cluster virus or single cluster virus purely hardware component if okay. your your existing virus is your existing 
where of size is not sufficient, then you, you will increase the next size like that. This is not an a storage cup. This is completely hardware component. I'm repeating again and again. Fine. Okay. Yeah. This point is clear or not clear? If this is clear, then I will go with the auto scale and then economy. Your your voice is not clear. Sir, just uh, once again explain this standard concept. Standard and then uh, auto scale and then standard. Uh? Auto scale and then standard. Scaling policy standard. No, no, scaling policy standard. This this is the like not only a uh, scaling policy standard. The combination of the mode and then scaling policy. It will not come only a standard. So the combination of mode. If you select auto scale, the scaling policy here. I will tell you. That's okay, fine, guys. If you ask me a number of questions, also not a problem. But the thing is, you guys need to understand. See here. See here. The mode, what I said, the mode auto scale. Agree? Mode auto scale. Agree? Mm. Say yes or no. Yes. And then maximum number of customers, minimum customers, I have selected one to five. Whatever you select. Agree? Yes. And then I have selected scale, 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 scaling policy standard. Agree? Agree. Right. So you can't select only a standard or you can't select only auto scale. This is a combination. So what is the meaning of this overall? I will tell you in one point. So based on the workload, based on the data load, based on the query processing, based on the data processing, your maximum number of customers, if you define as a maximum number of clusters to six, so first it will check with the minimum. So it will check whether the workload or a data processing or a data load is sufficient with the, is sufficient with the uh, one cluster. It will check. if it is not sufficient to the one cluster it will increase to first it will internally it will not internally internally it will increase to two if this is not sufficient internally it will increase to three internally it will increase to four internally it will increase to five internally it will, it will increase to six as you have defined as a maximum clusters six six is that fine or not no and then even for your queries also, for your queries also. So this is about a auto scale and then standard. And In case so, of auto scale uh, and then, yeah. So uh, when we, we will decide that uh, with the auto scale, we can use the standard or economy maximum. I will, I will, I will tell you. So I will tell you the differences. So standard auto scale and then standard auto scale and then economy. Then we will come to know at the, what in which situation we are going to use these things and all. Fine. And uh, miss uh, the cluster, which means uh, one to five, uh, that is automatically increase uh, as per the data load, or uh, we have to increase. Uh, our, uh, means uh, like uh, whenever we we have a more number of data. No, 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 no. See, while creation, while creation of a multi cluster warehouse, you will mm -hmm. define like this one and then six. You will give the maximum number of clusters. You will give the six. Okay. Fine. Firstly, we provide one to six. Right? Likewise. First, you will provide the one to six. Okay. What your snowflake will do based on the requirement as you have created this maximum number of six, even though you have provided a maximum number of six. It will not use the maximum number of six customers because everywhere the costs are involved. If you select the six, the different size. If it is using the two, different size. So to save the cost, first it will mm -hmm. go with the minimum number of customers. No minimum minimum number of number of clusters. Fine. Right. Right. So based on your data processing, based on your data processing. Based on your, even though if you select a maximum number of clusters, it will not directly go the max, it will not go and then use the maximum number of customers directly. It will start with the one by one by one by one. If the things are not sufficient, then it will go to the six. Okay, it's clear or not? Yes. 
still confusion ah huh? this is internally went to uh, miss one by one or uh, we have to no inter no that's not right. internal see you you define you defined six maximum number of customers six okay and then internally defined maximum you have created a virtual warehouse one second right yes And sir, so, uh, this is your doing on the app dot snowflake dot com. Sorry. Uh, this is uh, you are creating the warehouse in app dot snowflake dot com, right? Yeah. No, no, that 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 I will show you. That I will show you. How do you create for those things, sir? Okay. okay. I will I will show you how do you create those things, sir. Don't uh, confuse with that. Miss, uh, my question is only that uh, whenever we define one to six, uh, then okay. the as per the data, uh, it uh, miss uh, the uh, snowflake internally uh, miss increase the miss. Suppose we have ten TB ten TB data, then we will uh, miss uh, like uh, we will use only one uh, virtual warehouse, only one. Uh, then Sorry? if it is zero. See, I have created this multi cluster warehouse. Okay. Fine. Hmm. Multi cluster warehouse. Get it. See, you you are able to see the sample multi cluster warehouse, right? Sample multi cluster warehouse. Just now I have created. Yes. Fine. Yes. I have created sample multi cluster warehouse. Which the these were details. What are the details I have given? Just let me know. One to six, ten, and standard. Oh, I have given these many options. What is the meaning of this means? Directly, it will not use the maximum number of customers. Directly, uh, maximum cluster. It will not use the maximum clusters. It will use one by one. If the things are not sufficient, then it will directly it will go into the six. Fine. Yeah. Correct. Right. That is how. Okay. Okay. Clear or not clear? Ah, uh, yes, yes, clear. No, no. I I will go with the one by one. Giant. Ah yes, sir. Clear, clear, sir. Yes. Giant. And then Manohar. Manohar. What about Rajesh? Hello. Sir, is clear, sir, for me. Right, yes, clear, sir, for me. Fine. Then we'll go with the other option. So now we have selected standard, which is auto scale. Now we can go with the economy. Economy. Here also you will select. You will do the same thing. Here also you will you will select the maximum and then minimum number of customers like, clusters like this. What it will do if you select the economy? In case of a standard, whenever you upload the data or whenever you submitted the your complex queries, it will calculate and then it will increase. What this economy will do? Suppose if you select a 10 SQL queries to your Snowflake. It will calculate that. It will calculate internally if the ten queries can be completed within the six minutes. If the ten complex queries can be executed within the six minutes, then it will go with the existing existing clusters. If the ten queries are not sufficient to execute within the six minutes, then it will increase the Next cluster. Next clusters. I will tell you once again. Here, so based on the workload, based on the data load, it will increase the next cluster. Here, it will wait. It will wait for the six minutes. It will internally calculate. Internally calculate by the Snowflake. If 
the queries can be executed within the six minutes. Whatever the queries are there in the queues, queue, when you submit, it will be there in the queue in the Snowflake. Whatever the queries are there, whatever the data load size is there, they can able to submit within the six minutes, then it will go with the minimum number of cluster number one. If, mm -hmm. if the things are not able to come to within the six minutes, then it will increase the next maximum number of clusters. This is about economy. Okay. Guys, clear or not? Tell me. Yes. Uh, means uh, in this uh, economy, whenever we select a scaling policy and economy, uh, whenever mm -hmm. we run the queries, it will wait for six, six minutes. Perhaps. After that, in, the, inter, the, inter, no, no, no. Internally, it will not wait. Internally, it will calculate. Whatever okay. you, whatever you guys are submitted ten queries internally, it will okay. it will calculate. Okay, uh, it uh -huh. will it will it will consider that I I received the ten queries. I can able to complete these queries uh, within six minutes or not? Yes, I am I am able to complete a, uh, these queries in six minutes. Then it will go with the minimum clusters. If if these queries are not able to complete within the six minutes, then it will increase with the uh, it will increase with the next next maximum number of customers. Clear or not? Tell me. Okay. No, no. Still, if you, if you have any doubts, ask me. Then I will tell you. Yes, uh, uh, standard is also increasing the cluster, and economy is also increasing the cluster. The difference is only that thing. It's increasing. Use, 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 See, use, usually the see maximum maximum number of customers. The concept is to increase the clusters based on the requirement, based on the requirement. But the thing is, the economy is so based on the time, the six minutes. Okay, huh, right. Yes. Based on the time, six minutes. The 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 major major funda to declare or define the maximum number of customers to give a more capacity to your hard disk. So here is. It will it will calculate internally whatever the queries are there in the queue. If I am able to, if I am able to complete those in six minutes, then I will use existing thing. Or else I will increase the maximum number of customers, maximum number of clusters. That is the major difference here. But but in real scenarios, we will go with this option only. This is the best practice. Okay. okay. This is the best practice. And then whatever third option is maximized. I will show you here. See, if you select maximized, if you select maximized, if you select maximized, there is no minimum and the maximum customers. There is no scaling policy. See here, if you select maximized, you will mm -hmm. be having the only cluster option. Select some clusters option, so there is no scaling policy. There is no scaling policy. Maximized means if you define clusters as a five, please observe the difference and then make a note somewhere. If you define a maximized clusters equal to five means when you submit all these things, when you submit all these things, instead of increasing one by one. Instead of increasing a one by one, all the clusters are used for your data processing parallelly. All the defined clusters, defined clusters are used parallelly to complete your task. This is the major difference. So here, so based on the capacity, it will increase the in these two options. In these two options, based on the <coughs> workload and capacity, the clusters are increased. The clusters are increased. Fine. So here in uh, maximize and then clusters, maximize and then clusters, it will be maximize and then clusters, it will be used. It will be used parallelly. All the it will be used parallelly. All the clusters at a time. Clear or not? But this is not recommendable. This is not recommendable because. If you select very small query also, then it will try to use all the clusters at a time. When you use number of 
more clusters uh, when you use number of more more clusters then it will charge that amount onto your organization so whenever you, you you try to use minimum number of clusters and then minimum number of storage component then it will charge the, that much of amount only if you use more storage capacity and then more hardware disk virtual virus then it will cost the more on your organization clear guys yes this is clear or not virtual virus or virtual uh, multi cluster virus Guys? No. Good, good, sir. Okay. So, in in single virtual virus, in clustered virtual virus, we have a common options, advanced options. I will, I will, I will tell you. Auto resume. Auto suspend. So this is the uh, this is the common for your single virtual virus and multi cluster virus. What is this auto resume? Auto resume S. Yes. Auto suspend S. Yes. So here there is no option S. Yes. You need to select this uh, like this. Yes or no? Like this. Fine. See auto resume is yes, nothing but let's first let's discuss about auto suspend S. Yes. What is the meaning? Suppose this is your Snowflake session. This is your Snowflake session. Fine. And this is your your uh, virtual virus. Your virtual virus. You created recently, right? This one, guys. Hmm. Sample multi cluster virus recently. Just now we have created this one. So what it will do auto suspend if after 10 minutes if you give it 10 minutes here auto suspend yes after 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 10 minutes if you are not using your virtual virus then it will go automatically into suspension mode it will go automatically into suspension mode when it is going into suspension mode then the charges are not applicable charges are not applicable and then you are saving cost to your organization fine so this is the beautiful option actually if if you are working continuously then it will be in active mode if you are not working if you are not working uh, continuously 10 minutes then it will go into a suspension mode and then again when you when you restart your session then it will come into this one auto resume automatically it will resume and then it will active it will active so what is what is the purpose and what is the meaning what is the benefit of this means see you are using your snowflake for continuous one hour so you kept aside your work and then you went outside so after 10 minutes so whatever you used for one hour then it will charge for you whenever you kept aside and then you went outside after 10 minutes automatically it will go into a suspension mode so at the time what it will do it will start to charge on you then it is saving cost for you. So that is the beauty of the snowflake. Whatever you use, you are paying for that only. So if you are not using continuously for one week, then it is not going to charge on you. So this is the beauty of your snowflake. Have you cleared the, these options, guys? Or not? Yes. yes. Yeah. So whatever I have shown you, whatever I have shown you, how do you create a how do you create a virtual virus? This is a so we will create again. Just this is a theoretical part. Eh? The theoretical part. So this is the syntax to create the virtual virus. This is a SQL syntax to create the virtual. We will create one by one. Just this is a theoretical part. Eh? Theoretical discussion. If you if you are not clear on this thing, just let me know. If you are clear, then uh, so we will close the session and then we will continue tomorrow with the uh, pricing. How the prices are applicable on your uh, uh, snowflake when you when you are using and then we will see the snowflake editions by tomorrow if you are clear then okay if you are not clear just ask me then we will discuss all these things these and all very much very much important concepts you need to understand you need to make a note 
you need to remember uh, you will you will get a you will get a questions entry questions on also uh, on this uh, concepts guys clear or not hello it's clear clear sir sir clear okay super super if you have any doubts you can ask me so that we can discuss Sir, today only I joined first time. Uh, previous classes, uh, how many classes sir, previously happened? May 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 I your name? My name is Rajesh Kumar. Rajesh, that's 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 fine, Rajesh. Whatever happened uh, in previous previous class, then I will try to I will try to provide you the uh, things. Just mm -hmm. whatever we have discussed, theoretical things we have discussed. Continue with that. Yeah. Then whenever whenever I get your time, then I will let you know all these things. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. So we have started with the basics and then the theoretical part. Uh, we have not started any like uh, uh, practical things. Mm -hmm. Just continue with this. Continue with this, then we will proceed. No, not not a problem. The duration how many days, sir? Thirty-five classes, uh, Rajesh. Okay. Okay. Guys, any doubts? No, sir. Shall we close the session and continue tomorrow, same time? Uh -huh. okay. Okay, sir. Well, thank you, guys. We will meet tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Bye, bye. Yes. So you need to contact to you need to contact the institute for the notes. Okay. They will give you. Okay. Fine. Yes, please. Thanks. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you. Virtual warehouse will be charged based on the credits. Credits. That is what? They will measure. They will measure on the. They will measure the charge or cost. So based on the number of credits you use, based on the number of credits you use. Suppose if you if you use X small, if you use X small virtual warehouse. So for one hour they will allocate you one credit. For one credit, how much they need to pay? How, how much they need to charge? They will see for one credit two point seven dollars. Four four dollars for different edition. Five point four dollars into another edition. Suppose if you use large for one hour, they are going to cancel eight credits. Eight credits into two point seven dollars for this edition. Eight credits into four dollars for this edition. Five point four into eight credits for this edition. So based on that, they are going to charge you guys. Have you clear about this uh, virtual risk calculation or not? Tell me. Yes. Confirm me, uh, everyone. Confirm me, everyone. If you yes. clear, then I will proceed further. Yes, yes. Clear, yes. right? So this is about this is about the hardware component uses calculation. What about the storage? What about the storage? See. If you have taken, you have taken, you have taken Snowflake subscription. Suppose let's consider this is the January month. So you, uh, your organization has assumed that the business is going to start from the January. But unfortunately, the business got delayed. Already you have taken the, already you have taken the subscription, but you are not using. In such case, in such case. You need to you need to you need to pay twenty five dollars per month if you are not using anything but you have taken a subscription and or if you have started to, you have you have taken the subscription and you have started to use the you have started to use your snowflake in this case for one TV you need two dollar for one TV you need to pay a forty dollars per month if you use hundred TV. Hundred into forty dollars per month. You need to pay. So the charge will be the cost will be in two 
two ways actually. You need to pay for the storage and you need to pay for the compute virtual or uh, virtual warehouse. So this is the way they are going to this is the way they are going to charge you guys. Is this clear or not? So this is minimum twenty five dollars you need to pay if you are using if you are not using. Suppose if you are using you are loaded you started to load the data so you need to pay forty dollars for TB. If you use five hundred GB then it will be divided into that part. So like that it will go. So this is about the pricing details on your hardware resources and your storage component. Clear or not? Yes. So, so these are the <coughs> these are the different virtual warehouse sizes. These are the different virtual warehouse sizes. So these are the credits. These credits are very much important. So based on this credit, they have already they have already defined. Boss, if you created your virtual warehouse with the medium size, so in this case, in this case, we are going to we are going to allocate you four credits per hour, and then four into so based on the addition, and then the two point seven dollar like that they are going to charge you. So this is very much important. You have to. Understand what is the different size of warehouse sizes and what are the credits? How they are going to start pricing on you? So this is about the pricing. This is about the uh, pricing. If you have any doubts in the understanding of the pricing, just let me know. We will discuss and then we will proceed further. If you, if you are clear, just confirm me. Then we will discuss next top topics. And also, yes. and also. Always, I am trying to tell you, please, please, please make a note somewhere uh, as a running note. <coughs> sure. Yes, sir. Guys, clear or not clear? Yes. Sir. Okay, fine. Then we'll go. We'll go. Uh, to discuss the different editions are available in the different editions are available in the snowflake different editions we have a four editions actually standard enterprise business critical virtual data. so i am repeating i am repeating once again so you need to make a note also so we have a standard edition, we have a enterprise edition, we have a business critical edition, we have a virtual private edition. So these are the four types of editions we have in Snowflake. In general, or in in uh, projects, we are using this business critical. We are using this business critical uh, edition for our uh, business purpose. We are using. This business critical for our business purpose in our companies. In our companies, then we'll see what are the options are available. What are the different uh, benefits or great features are available in the each editions. The standard is the standard is very basic edition, very basic edition, very basic edition. Here, uh, whatever the data is you are going to store, that is in a encryption format. That is in a encryption format. Time travel is up to one day. Now, the time travel is one of the great feature in Snowflake. What is the meaning of the time travel? Time travel means suppose already I have explained in the very first class, but let me repeat that one. Time travel nothing but if the data is modified from the table. So after after modification of the data from the table. So you came to know that you come to know that you came to know that. So this is not an a. So whatever you have done the modification, then that is not an in uh, uh, like uh, that is not a good modification. You need to restore the original data into your table. So in such scenario, in Snowflake has provided you an option, the time travel option. Nothing but you can go back to the you can go back to the history of the table. And then you can bring the original data and restore the original data to table. So in the standard edition, in the standard edition, 
this history will be available for only one day. So if, suppose if you if you cross no if you if you done the modification to the table today six o'clock till tomorrow six o'clock you can able to go to the history of the table and then bring the original data and then restore the data. It will it will available for only one day. If you cross that one day, then it is not possible. And then what about the disaster recovery? Disaster recovery, nothing but suppose if databases go offline, if databases go offline, then you can able to you can able to bring that into online. What about this data share? Data share, nothing but yeah, secure data share. So you can able to you can able to share the data between the <coughs> Snowflake accounts. This is about your standard edition. Coming to the enterprise edition, whatever the features are available in the standard, that will be available. That is very basic. Second one is multi-cluster warehouse. Yesterday we have discussed single warehouse and then multi-cluster warehouse. In standard edition only you can work with a single warehouse. This enterprise edition will be supporting the multi-cluster warehouse also. This time travel in enterprise edition will be there for 90 days. In case of standard time travel will be available only one day. In in case of enterprise, in case of enterprise, time travel option will be around till 90 days. So this is a great feature actually. This is a great feature actually. So suppose 90 days means if you have done your modifications today, till 90 days if you want to bring the data then it will be available for it will be available for the 90 days so within that time any time you can able to go back to the history of the table and then bring the data bring the data and then next what is this materialized views materialized views one of the concept in snowflake which is used to improve the your uh, sql improve the performance of your sql query suppose your select statement is taking around five seconds to return the data. On top of that, if you create a if you create a materialized view, then you can able to bring the data in within one second. The beauty of this materialized view is it will improve the performance of your SQL query. It will improve the performance of your SQL query where your SQL query is taking one minute, but your materialized view will materialized view will view will give the result within a fraction of seconds. So that is the great feature of great benefit of your materialized view. Search optimization, column level security, these things are provided in enterprise option. In business critical, so whatever the features are available in the enterprise edition, by default that will be there. Additionally, all the objects, all the things are encrypted everywhere. All the options, what, whatever, whatever you are going to create your objects, those are encrypted everywhere in the internally. We can't see those encryption, encryption number, but internally it is happening. Internally it is happening. So that is a great feature. What already enterprise edition has the so many features. Those features are available with the business critical plus, plus this uh, data encryption everywhere and then Failover and then disaster recovery. So failover and then disaster recovery nothing but if your database is crash, if database is crash, and then you can able to you can able to bring that that bring that database into online. Bring that database into online. So this is the great feature in the business critical edition. What about the virtual private? All business critical features are available in the virtual private and then the extra is you need to create a separate environment, separate uh, uh, servers for different different environments. Suppose if you are maintaining, if you are maintaining QA server, if you are maintaining testing server, if you are maintaining dev server, if you are maintaining production server. So for that you need to create a separate separate servers in your virtual private. So this is about the, this is about your Snowflake editions guys. Any doubts in this? These are some theoretical parts. You will get the interview questions. What are the different types of editions are available in Snowflake? 
and explain them and also you will get the what is warehouse what is multi processing warehouse and what is the snowflake architecture how many layers are there uh, what are the functionality of those architecture can you explain all those things these are the theoretical concept so you have to for sure you have to remember understand and explain thoroughly whatever we are discussing in the sessions if you, if you understand that and explain it clearly whatever we have discussed here that is 100% 1000% more than enough guys that's why i am asking you i will share you the note i will share you the note along with me you also prepare your some points some points in your notes so that you will check the material and then you will check the note so you will become a comfortable if you get if you get any doubts again you will come back to me and we will discuss on the same topic so that you will become a comfortable so that you will become a comfortable so this is about the additions guy any doubts let me know any doubts let me know just open open your mouth guys uh no sir but uh, i wanted to know in a typical real time environment or a real time project um uh, typically a dev or qa or a production mm -hmm. environment what are the additions might be there i mean will be there whether the dev will be having only standard addition or whether the qa having enterprise addition yeah. only yeah. or the yeah. production yeah. might usually usually in our real scenarios in our organization we all are using business critical for all the uh, uh, for all the requirements okay next question <clears throat> if you don't have any questions then we'll move into another topic to discuss mm -hmm. Understood. Fine. Yeah. Then we'll go. How to connect to Snowflake? Web user interface. Second one is no SQL through the DOS command. Through the DOS command, so we can able to we can able to connect your Snowflake. You can able to connect your Snowflake using your web user interface or using Snowflake or no use no no SQL using DOS command. And also apart from this, we have some other options also, but. Majorly, we are using these two options only. Some other options also available: JDBC drivers, ODBC drivers, those things and all. But in real-time scenarios, as per my experience, we have used only these two options. Only these two options. Then, web, as part of our regular classes, daily we are using these web user interfaces. It's no SQL and the DOS command things. Uh, we will be having the one session. How do we use this NoSQL? Then now, then now we'll see how to create the how to create the uh, Snowflake account. How to create the Snowflake account? Fine. We need to we need to follow the steps and create yourself. Create yourself. create yourself and then we will explore what are the options are available in the your snowflake account then go to go to google so here make a note somewhere snowflake.com snowflake.com guys have you make a note snowflake.com Yes. I need confirmation from all because you need to create account from your end. This is this is the free account. 
this is a free account it will be available for the one month you can practice in the tenure environment you can practice in the tenure environment you need to create you can create, which is very easy step you can create from your end also just you need to follow what i am doing right just this is snowflake.com enter the snowflake.com then you will get into this home page click on the start for free click on the start for free so here provide your all the details first name i will give the durga soft durga soft uh, email id i will give my email id it will go into that i will give the company name as durga soft role you need to select consultant location you need to select as a india guys are you following or not yes 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 so you need to give your personal details here so once you have given everything just continue click on the continue see here you need to select edition standard or enterprise or business critical i am selecting a business critical for you need to make a note down you need to select uh, you need to select a business critical option you need to select a business critical option this is the option to select the edition once you select the business business critical this is the option to provide the select the cloud provider you need to select the aws guys you are following or not yes this is for funds super so you need to select the you need to select the aws see here it is it is asking the continental information so as we have selected a india just Select this Asia specific Singapore. Then click on the get get started. Click on the get started. Click on the get started. Now, now it will ask this many options. You can skip this one. You can skip this one. you can skip this one see now you are now signed up an email to an email to activate your account has been sent to your email id i will log in into my email id here you will get a one link to activate the account snowflake.com activate your snowflake account click on this click to activate click to activate then it will navigate to this page now give the username and then password so this is the key here you need to make a note this username and then password i will give the durga soft user 11 One second.
So you need to give the username and you need to give the password and confirm password and then get started. So this is your home page of home page of this is your home page of your snowflake account you need to make a note down like this this is the your account url this is username this is password for your account you need to save somewhere so that you can able to so that you can able to log in directly and then work so this is the uh, your when you create a account then you will get you will get this page at very first at very first so have you make a note down all the steps guys yes yes sir. <coughs> see when you get here this option first option is worksheets first option is worksheets if you click on this worksheet see here you will have a plus worksheet if you click on this so from this option from here you can able to from here you can able to query your sql queries in this area so this is one of the option so worksheets where you are going to worksheets where you are going to write your sql queries next data so here here you can able here you can able to create the database fine yes yeah. so here if you want to create a any new database you can able to create new database if you want to create any schemas then you can able to create the new schemas from here like that see first one is worksheets is important data is important and then this in admin here we have warehouse option here you need to create your warehouse so these are the three options you have to understand so once go into your worksheet go into your worksheet then click on this latest one so here you can able to create your own database create database sample database so here you can able to see your sample database like that so for now just whatever we have followed the steps you create from your end and then start exploring on the things whatever you can able to explore you can explore and uh, whatever you need to understand you can understand so from tomorrow onwards we will start using the coding and then the actual snowflake uh, practical sessions but before that you need to create a account and be ready with align with me so that whatever we are going to discuss in the session uh, as a theoretical part and then coding part i am going to share with you i am going to share with you then you can you can able to practice from your end also okay guys let me know if you have any trouble in understanding how to create the snowflake account or something else why i am stopping till here means at any cost 100% you need to create account today while coming to tomorrow session you have to be ready with the your account so only after completion of the tomorrow session i am going to share with you all the code all the things so that right immediately you can able to 
do the practice next if you are not creating if you are unable to create the account if you are not able to create the account you are not ready then you are lacking and then you are not able to do the practice and then then it is problem for you so that what i am suggesting you whatever the queries whatever the difficulties you face you need to at technical create the account and be ready with the for tomorrow's class that's why i am stopping the session here fine guys okay sir any difficulties okay, here sir. no sir no, no, no sir. right sir. all good yes all good tomorrow we will meet at same city same guys okay sir yeah fine right yes yeah. okay then we'll close the session for today yeah. okay thank you thank you bye bye uh, virtual warehouse will be charged based on the credits credits that they what they will measure they will measure on the they will measure the charge or cost so based on the number of credits you use based on the number of credits you use suppose if you if you use x small if you use x small virtual warehouse so for one hour they will allocate you one credit for one credit how much they need to pay how, how much they need to charge they will see for one credit 2.7 dollars 4 4 dollars for different edition 5.4 dollars into another edition suppose if you use large for one hour they are going to consider eight credits eight credits into 2.7 dollars for this edition eight credits into Four dollars for this edition, five point four into eight credits for this edition. So based on that, they are going to charge you guys. Have you clear about this uh, virtual warehouse calculation or not? Tell me. Yes. Confirm me, uh, uh, everyone. Confirm me, everyone. If you yes. clear, then I will proceed for that. Yes, yes. Clear, yes. right? So this is about this is about the. hardware component uses calculation what about the storage what about the storage see if you have taken you have taken you have taken snowflake subscription suppose let's say this is a january month so you uh, your organization has assumed that the business is going to start from the january but unfortunately the business got delayed already you have taken the already you have taken a subscription but you are not using in such case in such case you need to you need to you need to pay 25 dollars per month if you are not using anything but you have taken a subscription and or if you have started to you have you have taken the subscription and you have started to use the you have started to use your snowflake in this case for 1 tb you need to dollar for 1 tb You need to pay a forty dollars per month. If you use hundred TB, hundred into forty dollars per month, you need to pay. So the charge will be the cost will be in two two ways actually. You need to pay for the storage and you need to pay for the compute virtual or virtual warehouse. So this is the way they are going to. This is the way they are going to charge you guys. Is it clear or not? So this is minimum twenty five dollars. You need to pay if you are using. If you are not using, suppose if you are using, you are loaded. You started to load the data, so you need to pay forty dollars for TB. If you use five hundred GB, then it will be divided into that part. So like that it will go. So this is about the pricing details on your hardware resources and your storage component. Clear or not? Yes. Yeah. So these are the <coughs> these are the different virtual warehouse sizes. These are the different virtual warehouse sizes. So these are the credits. 
these credits are very much important so based on this credits they have already they have already defined boss if you created your virtual warehouse with the medium size so in this case in this case we are going to we are going to allocate you four credits per hour and then four into so based on the addition and then the 2.7 dollar like that they are going to charge you so this is very much important you have to understand what is the different size of warehouse sizes and what are the credits how they are going to start pricing on you so this is about the pricing this is about the uh, pricing if you have any doubts in the understanding of the pricing just let me know we will discuss and then we will proceed further if you, if you are clear just confirm me then we will discuss next top topics and also yes, and also always i am trying to tell you please 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 make a note somewhere uh, as a running note <coughs> sure this sir guys clear or not clear yes okay fine then we'll go we'll go uh, to discuss that different editions are available in the different editions are available in the snowflake different editions we have a